Hello, hello everybody. Um, today is day one of my special teacher training. So um, this training is just for teachers. And um, I'm really excited to be um, just doing this training for you guys. Um, I really, this is so important, you guys. Managing stress. Um, I used to be a teacher. I used to teach first grade down in Widefield. Um, if you're a Colorado Spring, if you're local to Colorado Springs, I taught, um, again, I got to first grade. I taught English to preschoolers, first and second graders, and kindergartners in Santiago, Chile. And so I was a teacher um, for several years, and I know just being a teacher in general is really stressful. Um, it was a very stressful job. And I can't even imagine what you guys are all going through with the pandemic, with going in school, out of school, and everything that you guys are doing on top. Um, this is for all educators, principals, assistant principals, homeschooling moms too. Like this is a lot of work. And um, you know, I posted a question last week that like, hey, how are my teacher friends doing? And the number of responses that were just like stressed and like I'm drinking and I how to help, um, I would love really I wanted to kind of team up with the people in my life, the coaches and life coaches, um, advocates in my life that know a lot about stress, um, including myself, especially when it comes to emotional eating. So um, really excited to be hopping on live tonight to just share with you guys a little bit more about some of my biggest tips when it comes to stress eating um, and emotional eating. So the rest of the week, every night this week at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, so I know tonight's a little bit different. Um, so every night this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I will be going live with a guest expert um, to talk to you about ways to manage your stress. So here's what we have coming up. Tomorrow night is Coach Andrew. He is a stress coach. Um, specifically, he's going to be teaching us some strategies that he uses with all of his clients specifically around how to manage your stress. Um, he's gonna give you like seven tips and it's gonna be awesome. Wednesday is going to be um, my good friend, um, Rachel. She's going to be talking, she's a wellness advocate. She's gonna be talking about ways she manages stress um, right now when and which essential oils she uses and what the heck are essential oils, what do they do, how can they help you. And then Thursday we're going to be wrapping up with um, my really good friend and life coach and Reiki master, Courtney, and she's going to be talking to us all about meditation. So um, it's going to be great. Um, if you are on live, please let me know. I'm not seeing... Um, I just want to make sure I'm not seeing any comments yet. So I just want to make sure um, that I'm on live. So if you are watching live, say hello. Give me a couple hearts and comments. And um, I cannot wait to dive right into this. So let me just make sure. I might hear screaming children in the background. Okay. I think we're, we're good to go. All right. So let's go ahead and dive in. So how to stress, how to manage stress without emotional eating. So it seems like the virus comes up in every conversation at all times for about eight months or however long it's been, too long, for a really long time. So um, I think that this is why I really wanted to be to talk about this is because it, it, it it's so frustrating and it's exhausting and if you're feeling anxious, overwhelmed, stressed, please know you're not alone, especially my teacher friends. And having an unknown future is really scary. The pandemic is real and we need to be careful, but we can still be peaceful about it, okay, um, mentally. So again, today we're gonna talk about how to manage your stress, specifically when it comes to emotional eating. So if you're an emotional eater, I want you to comment below, me, I'm an emotional eater, um, and then tell me like what typically triggers you to emotionally eat. Like, is it stress? Is it anxiety? Is it your kids? Is it teaching specifically? What about teaching really stresses you out? Um, I would love to know. Um, okay. So I'm going to meet today. I'm going to talk to you how to manage your stress without overeating, um, overcome overwhelm, work through your body's cravings with all the stocked up food around and be able to see the shining light on the other side which with much more peace and control. So these are the same techniques that I use um, right now to help myself um, and my clients 
um, get through stress without turning to food or alcohol, um, and how to navigate all of this uncertainty as gracefully as possible. So I can't imagine how hard it would have been to be, you know, locked up at home with so much food around when I was personally struggling with my relationship with food. And I want you to be set up for this time period um, as best as possible, okay? Especially since I know a lot of teachers are going home right now, back to e-learning, okay? So, or a lot of, I know a lot of teachers that are in quarantine. Um, so again, the thought of so many women and teachers, like teachers struggling with stress and food during this time period on top of everything else that's going on honestly breaks my heart. Um, but I want to tell you that it is 100% avoidable even if your fridge is loaded for days, okay? So this is why I want to do this free training and it's going to cover three main topics. The first thing is going to cover how to manage your stress and get out of famine mode. The second thing we're going to cover is preventing emotional eating and the difference between emotional eating and numbing out um, with a tool that I'm going to go over called how to change the way you feel. And then the third thing I'm going to do is um, how to crush your cravings with emotional eating. Okay. Um, hold on a second. Okay. So let's dive in. I had to make do a little typo here to make sure we're on live. All good. Okay, so I want to equip you. Again, I want to equip you for this time in regards to your relationship with food and set you up for success. So it's common to go for control and tools and tactics, which unfortunately don't work. They just make you crave more food and we don't want that. So I'm going to talk about a new methodology to work with your body and your brain to have a better relationship with food. So again, step one, we need to get out of survival mode. So how do you know if you're in survival mode or famine mode? I want you to ask yourself, do any of these apply to you? And feel free to comment below. Um, do you think about food all the time? Do you have intense cravings? Do you feel like you're eating, overeating almost every meal or snack? Do you have an on track or off track mentality when it comes to food? Um, do you find it hard to stop eating junk food once you start? So again, here's what you can do to help yourself get out of survival mode. So let's talk a little bit more about this. Your body is wired for survival. It's only job in a crisis is to help you store nutrients and fuel in your body for the days and the weeks to come in case you are in a famine. So there are two ways that survival modes happen, your behavior with food, and then what is actually happening in our world and in your world as teachers right now. It's crazy, unknown stress. <laughs> so let's look a little, let's look at your physiology as it pertains to food. So right now, in general, when someone feels like food is being controlled, aka a diet or actually or maybe your food is actually being limited, your brain automatically switches into famine mode. An alarm goes off, your brain freaks out, and it makes you eat and eat and eat, and it makes you think about food, obsess about food, and it makes you more susceptible to actually emotionally eat and use food in times of stress, okay? So get this, even if you are eating plenty of calories, okay, um, you may, or maybe you say like, I'm overeating all day, or maybe as a teacher, you're sitting there stress snacking, okay? And there's no way my body's in a famine mode. Um, hi, if you're on live, say hi. Um, it doesn't matter, okay? If you're still eating, but maybe just not quite to satiation, um, or if you've been yo-yo dieting and binge eating, the body reads that as a famine state, okay? So let me say that again. If you are yo-yoing, hey Lex, if you're yo-yoing between dieting and restricting, or maybe you're not dieting, you're just trying to be good, okay? So let's say you're not dieting, you're just trying to be really good, or you're following a 30-day challenge, or you're trying to cut carbs, okay? Your body reads that as constant state of crisis every time you're yo-yoing between those things, okay? So the calmer and more fed your body is, the better it will work and the healthier and more stable your weight and your appetite will be. So our bodies end up right where they're supposed to be when we stop trying to control our weight. 
So if the only thing we need to control is how we treat ourselves and learning to feed ourselves normally. So again, this is for you teachers. Like if you are stress eating or if you're like going long periods of time, we're going to get into this, but going long periods of time where you're not eating certain things or you're trying to cleanse or you're trying to do all these things to try and stay healthy. What that does is again, your body reads that as a famine state. So the sooner that you can accept that your body will handle this whole weight and stress thing for you, the sooner that your health and your life will improve. Okay. So basically eating less than you're hungry for triggers your body's survival mode, which changes your hormones and your brain chemistry, which then lowers your metabolism and makes you biologically obsessed with food. Okay. So the mental fixation on food, so feeling crazy, feeling crazy around food is actually caused by physical restriction. And here's the thing. A lot of the clients, a lot of the women I work with don't even know that they're restricting. They're like, I'm not dieting. Okay, but even like mentally or emotionally restricting your food, like I'm not going to eat carbs or, um, you know, like I'm not eating sugar this whole week, that kind of even mental or like physiological restriction can cause this state of famine response. Okay, so food fixation and overeating and binge eating are caused by your body actually trying to force you off of the diet or out of famine for your survival. So if you're obsessed with food, you have triggered a famine state. If you are binge eating, you are in a famine state. There is, this is true no matter how much you weigh or how much you are already overeating. Okay. So when you're stuck in food survival mode, you can go through your day. Okay. So sorry, when you're not stuck and feeling crazy around food. So this would be someone that has a completely normal relationship with food. This is what it looks like. They can pretty much go through the day and only think about food when they're hungry. Um, you'll eat what you crave, but you'll crave what you need. So sometimes that might be a salad. Sometimes that might be a cookie, sometimes fruit or steak. Okay. You can eat when you're distracted or tired or stressed or sad, and you can still stop when you get full. Okay. So it's really important to get your safety and physiology handled first when it comes to trying to handle your emotional and overeating. So think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay. I remember we use this in teaching when we're looking at kids behavior, like again, think about like the bottom. Okay. So just for you to remember the bottom triangle is physiological and then it's safety love and belonging, esteem. And then the top one is like the self actualization. So this bottom, the physiological, like you need to be like your body needs to be fed, well rested, sleep, food, those things have to be met. Okay. So basically you need to eat enough to feel satisfied. So your brain isn't screaming at you. When you are nourished and fed, your brain isn't in overdrive to eat. Then your cravings naturally go away. Um, emotions get a lot easier to cope with and all this fighting and feeling out of control in your brain just goes away. So this is not the time teachers or homeschooling mamas or whoever's watching this. This is not the time to diet. This is not to, this is also not the time to say F it and eat whatever you want. There is a happy medium. And you need to take care of your physiology needs so your brain can take care of you and stop yelling at you to eat. <laughs> so how do you do that? How do you get yourself out of survival mode? Step two, how to actually manage your stress and change the way you feel and the difference between emotional eating and numbing out. So first, I want to walk you through a really powerful exercise. To, it's called changing the way you feel. So I want you to follow these steps below. Number one, if you're ever feeling like, let's say you're going about your day and you're teaching, you're on the zoom with the kids and someone like is saying the F word and is snotting their boogers all over zoom or something, or you're just feeling like really stressed out or really just sad about the unknown. Like, I don't know where this is going. Maybe you're in your head, you're drinking a glass of wine. You're just like, Oh my God, I just found out that this is happening or we have to quarantine. What do you do? Okay. So the first thing I want you to do is follow these seven steps and I will put this link in the comments below. Um, the first thing I want you to do is I want you to name your feelings. So you would say, I'm feeling anxious. I'm feeling annoyed or stressed. 
I'm feeling overwhelmed. Say it out loud, okay? Where, and then the second step, where in your body do you feel that anxiousness, okay? Um, I know for me, I personally feel it in my chest. My stomach gets kind of upset sometimes too. Sometimes my throat will even hurt um, when I'm feeling really anxious. So I want you to get present at where in your body do you actually feel the stress, okay? Third step. If that stress in your body could talk right now, what would it say? Okay. Um, number four, ask yourself, what do I need? What do I need right now? Okay. Um, it might be like, I need some peace. I need some relaxation. I need a time away. I need a hug. I need to call my best friend and just vent, okay? Fifth step, what is one small step you can take to meet your needs? So let's say like you really just need a vacation. One small step would be like, okay, right now, my vacation option is hiding in my pantry away from my children. That might be the one small step, okay? Or maybe the one small step is like, I'm just gonna go upstairs, I'm gonna take a bath, I'm just gonna, I need to put myself into a relaxation mode. So one small little step might be to like go upstairs and start running a bath, okay? So one little tiny action you can take to start to change the way you feel. The next step, what am I truly grateful for in this moment? It could be the smallest, smallest thing. Like I am grateful for this glass of wine or I am grateful for this nice hot bubble bath that I get to take right now. It's one small thing of gratitude. Okay. The last thing seems kind of silly. The, the seventh step is to smile at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> Thanks Lex. She said it's no smart, smart to break down. Yes. The seventh thing, this literally sounds ridiculous, but there's a lot, a lot of research into like even smiling meditations. So even when you're feeling like pissed off at the world, it, you literally force yourself to smile in the mirror for one minute. And over time, like just the act of these facial muscles moving up can actually change your brain chemistry into feeling a tiny bit happier. This isn't going to take you from pissed off to super happy. It's going to take you from pissed off to like less pissed off, right? Like just focus on one level at a time. Okay. And don't judge yourself so harshly. Okay. It's pretty unrealistic to think that you're going to go from pissed off or sad to all the way up to like just blissful peace, okay? It's gonna take a little bit of time. Give yourself some time to like work yourself up to those feelings, okay? All right, so now, how do we actually prevent emotional eating? How do we prevent it? Like how do we even get there before it even starts? You're teaching, you're having a crazy day. How do we even prevent emotional eating, okay? So first, let's talk about and what I define as emotional eating. First of all, Emotional eating is not all bad. We are human beings and we have emotions. So if you had a great day at work and then you ate dinner, are you eating because you're happy? No, you're happy. You had a great day and you need to eat. Okay. So the same rules apply um, when you're sad or pissed off or angry or you have anxiety or you're feeling depressed. Okay. Um, you're going to eat for how you feel. Okay. So ask yourself, how do you want to feel before you can eat can really help with it. So here's, here's another example. Let's say you had a really terrible day at work and, um, you're going to eat a little bit differently than if you had a great day. You're also going to eat a little bit differently depending on how you want to feel. Let's say again, you had a really, really bad day at work. You got fired or like something happened. Someone had a COVID case and you were exposed and you're like, holy crap, my life sucks. Okay. So what you could do is ask yourself, how do I want to feel? <laughs> if you just had a crazy day and you haven't really eaten a lot in a couple hours, you're going to eat something like grounding, warm, like, oh, like a big bowl of chili or a big bowl of mac and cheese, like something that's like homemade, comforting. You're going to choose something more comforting on those days that you feel more crazy anxiety. You're going, it's going to feel better. Okay. Now let's say the next, let's say there's a morning you're about to go meet up with your friends for a, a masked social distance hike in the woods, but you're outside. So it's fine. Let's say you're going for a hike 
and you are not going to eat a big bowl of chili right before you go on a hike, right? That just wouldn't feel good. So you're going to ask yourself, how do I want to feel right now? And what type of foods are going to support me and how I want to feel. So if you're going to want to feel light and energized, you're going to eat a light and energizing breakfast. So maybe some fruit and some yogurt with some granola, like that's going to feel good for a hike, not a big bowl of chili. So again, emotional eating, I, it's not bad. You know, it, sometimes you need a freaking bowl of ice cream. Uh, hey, Rachel, sometimes you just need a bowl of ice cream after you've had a rough day. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, you know, with the current situation right now, that might be a totally appropriate response to stress. I don't know how many times I've gone into my pantry, closed the door and hid from my children and ate chocolate chips. Here's the difference. Okay. I am choosing to eat the chocolate and I know full well that in that moment, that is how I'm choosing to deal with my stress. Okay, I'm not numbing out. So here's the difference, here's kind of the line. Can you eat some chocolate or ice cream or french fries? Okay, release the guilt and then move on. Or are you just choosing to check out, numb out, not feel your emotions, say screw stress, I don't even wanna think about that, I'm just gonna eat and eat and eat until I stop thinking about it. Okay, that's, there's a difference between numbing out and then choosing to eat emotionally. So if you feel like you're in the place of like, I just totally numb out and I can't eat with emotions without feeling guilty, I want you to look at your relationship with your weight and your body. That's typically where it's rooted in. Because when you're feeling, if, when you're accepting of your body and you're not dieting, and like we talked about, you're getting out of that diet and famine mode, you can go eat some chocolate chips in your pantry and eat emotionally and you move on with your life. You're like, yep, I just ate a lot of chocolate chips and now I'm moving on, okay? Um, now, again, because eating is not your only strategy. If you are a dieter, if you are a restrictor, or you are trying to restrict your calories, you will emotionally eat. It's predictable. If you have a really easy breezy relationship with food, you might emotionally eat every now and then, but it's really not the top of your list because you have so many other strategies in place to help you when you are feeling stressed. So eating isn't going to be the number one anymore. It becomes like the number five. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if this is making sense. Like, yes, that makes sense. Like I totally get that. Um, ask me your questions, okay? So again, Another thing, we're on preventing emotional eating. Another thing to prevent emotional eating, um, first of all, like your relationship with food is huge and your body is huge. But the next thing I want you to do is really simple. Be present. So that means, teachers, give yourself a freaking lunch break. Give yourself a snack break. Like, sit down, give yourself 30 minutes to actually be present, to sit, relax, breathe, and eat the dang chocolate if you want. Or eat your lunch, like give yourself a break. No more like checking emails, responding to students while you're shoveling things down, okay? Your brain needs to hear, get the messages that you're satisfied, there's satisfaction, there's pleasure, there's yummy taste, it smells good. Your brain needs all of those things to accurately assess your meal. So if you're eating super fast, and you're not paying attention and you're not actually enjoying your meal, you're probably gonna end up eating more later because your brain didn't get the satisfaction it needed. So be present when you're eating, okay? So with emotional eating and how to prevent it, we need to find ways to comfort, nurture and distract and resolve our issues without using food. So anxiety, loneliness, boredom and anger are all emotions that we experience on a daily basis right now with COVID <laughs> and especially as a teacher, I'm sure. So, and each has its own trigger. So food won't fix any of these feelings, as you know. It may comfort them in the short term. It might distract you from the pain. Or again, like we talked about, it may numb, make numb you into a food hangover. But as you know, it's not gonna solve the problem. If anything, you're gonna feel so much worse in the long run because that guilt kicks in, right? So the next thing I wanna talk about in this training is we need to detect your vulnerability to eating problems. So it might not be your emotions, okay? So many people believe that they're compulsive overeaters or binge eaters or 
they always overeat because, but that's really not the case. So before we kind of explore the emotional connections we have with food, we need to determine whether your eating is actually based on difficulties you're, ha you're, you're having handling emotions, or rather is it a consequence of lacking of self-care or deprivation you feel from a restriction or diet mentality. So there's a couple of things that could be going on. So this is a really quick breather to look into my, your self-care practices, okay? So teachers, listen up. So if your self-care is lacking right now, anyone self-care lacking, just shoot me some likes, be like, yep, my self-care is lacking, just comment below, okay? It can be really hard to be tuned into your body um, and accurately hear hunger and fullness cues and be tuned in if you're not taking care of yourself. So let's make sure you're taking care of yourself. So you might want to write this down and just take a look for yourself when you get off the, when you get off the training. So, um, sleep teachers, how is your sleep? Are you getting a solid seven to nine hours a night? Um, go to bed. Here's a couple quick sleep tips. Go to bed at the same time every night. Turn off freaking Facebook COVID news alert crap at least an hour before bed, okay? Um, what I do is I personally like put a timer on my phone so like there's a limit. My screen goes black. So I can't check my phone for like an hour before bed. So between 8 and 9, my phone is off, okay? Um, and it's put away. And then I also put my phone... I plug it in in my bedroom across the room from me. So I'm not tempted to just be scrolling right before bed. Okay. There's my biggest tip. Um, but as far as sleep, like, are you sleeping in a cool environment? Um, you're getting like some movement during the day. Um, you're getting some fresh air. You're not drinking caffeine in the afternoon. You're reducing your alcohol. I know it's hard. I know it's so hard with alcohol, but like a lot of times people think it helps them go to sleep fast, but it actually disrupts your sleep. So it can be a sleep disruptor. So like one glass, if you have to. Okay. Um, all right. The next thing I want you to check for self care is your life balance. You probably are laughing at me like balance. What? Okay. But I want you to look like, where is your life out of balance? So what can you do to reduce the time spent on certain areas to provide more opportunities for other aspects in your life? So I want you to look at the areas of relationships, um, with like your friends, family, um, your husband, your partner, um, look at the area of, um, you know, health, like what's going on there. Um, as far as exercise movement, taking care of yourself, what's going on with your work, like teaching wise, like, do you feel like that's taking an, like a huge proportion of your time? And like, how can you scale back? How can you ask for help? Can you make sure, you know, you're feeling balanced? Cause when we feel unbalanced, that's when things go whack and we start emotional eating. Okay. So emotional, we'll get to this in a minute, but Emotional eating is usually a doorway. So if you're shoveling down food all the time, that's the eating is a way of telling you, hey, something's up. Pay attention to me. You're not taking care of yourself. Okay. All right. Next thing for self care, I know I just touched on this, but nourishment. Are you nourishing yourself? Okay. Halloween candy does only does so much. Okay. So like, a couple crackers here and there or a piece of string cheese like for lunch is not going to cut it. You need full, relaxing, nice meals. Think of like the entree in at a restaurant, like the entree section. Like that's what your meal should look like. Nourishing big meals to make sure your body's getting all the macronutrients and micronutrients it needs from food. Okay. So are you eating in a nourishing, relaxing, pleasant eating environment? You're eating high quality foods. Um, again, you have a good eating rhythm. You're eating breakfast, lunch, dinner, maybe some snacks in there. You're not, not eating all day and then eating all of your calories at night. That's if you want to gain weight, that's what you do. Okay. And I do these checks. I do all of these checks with you. Um, one-on-one, -on -one, if that's something you're interested in, I do this. I will totally hop on the phone with you and help you balance that stuff out for my teachers. Okay. And then finally stress. Okay. What are some ways that you can manage your stress? We're going to be teaching you this tomorrow, Andrew and I, and then um, Rachel and Courtney, the rest of the week, we're going to be teaching you more tools on actually how to deal with stress. Um, but some little ones that we're going to talk about, like meditating, talking with a friend, doing therapy, um, getting a coach, someone to talk to, online play dates, or if you have cool neighbors and you guys are all in the same circle, like get outside, play dates, moving, journaling, okay? 
All right, so I know this is a lengthy training, but I really wanna make sure you guys are getting a lot of value. So the next thing we're gonna talk about is emotional eating tools. So if you identify as an emotional eater, these tools are really gonna help you. Number one, learning to sit with your feelings. Okay, so kind of like taking a time out and asking yourself, what am I feeling right now? Kind of like when we go back to what you wanna eat, you're eating for the way you wanna feel. Asking yourself, what, you know, how do I feel? What am, what am I feeling right now? So before you put food in your mouth, I want you to set a timer for five minutes, okay? And I want you, like, let's say you're coming home, right? You know, you just finished your class online, and you're like, oh my god, I just need to eat something, and you're not hungry, okay? So if you're starving, please go eat something. But if you're like just feeling like you just want to emotionally snack, here's what I want you to do: set a timer for five minutes. Explore any feelings or emotional triggers that you're experiencing right now in that moment that could be causing your desire to eat. So what are you feeling right now? And when the timer goes off, I want you to take a moment to kind of like think about, you know, do I still want to eat? And if you answered yes, I want you to ask yourself like, what do I need in this moment to actually deal with my current feelings? Okay, do you need quiet time? You know, do you need to talk to a friend, get a hug, feel connected? Do you need more pleasure in your life? Here's a big sugar and pleasure connection. A lot of my clients that are fixated on sugar don't have a lot of time in their life where they have pleasure, like fun, pleasure, sexual pleasure, any kind of pleasure. There's not a lot of pleasure in their life, so they use sweets and sugar and chocolate to make up for the lack of pleasure. This makes so much sense if you're a stressed out teacher. Of course you're eating all your kids Halloween candy right now. You're freaking stressed out because you need more fun. So like, even though your teaching is terrible online, like whatever is happening in your life with teaching right now, where can you add in moments of joy? Okay, where can you like, okay, we're planning on a, we're planning a fun hike over here this weekend, or you know what, I'm really looking forward to like having a movie night with my kids. Like how can you have more fun and pleasure in your life, okay? And then, okay, I want you to ask yourself, how can I fulfill this need without turning to food? So again, like those list of ideas, like what can I do to bring more pleasure and how can I fulfill this need of, I need to feel connected. I feel lonely. Like, how can I feel connected? I need to call a friend. So ask yourself, like, how can I fulfill this need without turning to food? Okay. Second emotional eating tip, helpful distraction. So it's totally okay to use distraction um, when it comes to learning to cope with your feelings without using food. So we need to be practical and realistic. So sometimes we just need a way to break free from the negative feelings. So maybe you don't want to feel your feelings in the moment. Maybe you're like, oh my God, Sierra, I don't want to just sit here and feel my feelings. So sometimes you just need a little break. So what I want you to do is we need to find a non-destructive activity um, that can give you an alternative to feeling those difficult feelings. Um, that gives you more satisfaction, joy, laughter, etc. So I want you to just make yourself a list of activities that you can do when you just feel like you need a break. I don't want to feel my feelings. I just need a distraction. Could be like dancing, movie, music, something funny, you know, like funny YouTube videos. I'm um, doing a puzzle, Sudoku, crosswords, you know, pick up a good book. Like a, I call it a beach read, like p pick up a beach read that can just totally get your mind in a different place. Play a game. Okay. Just give yourself permission to not be with your feelings <clears throat> and totally immerse yourself in another, another activity. Okay. So. Um, the last tip I have for you today is the stress snacking questionnaire. So this is something that before eating, I want you to ask yourself, number one, what am I feeling right now? Number two, what feeling or relief am I hoping that eating that Snickers will provide? Okay, so what it, what it means is, I really just want to feel a little bit of happiness. I want something in my mouth that tastes really good. I just want to relax for a second. I just don't want to think about school. I just don't want to think about it. What else could provide you that experience? Sometimes I might honestly just be the Snickers and then you move on. You eat a Snickers, you're like, oh my God, that's just what I needed. Now I'm going to go back to work. That's totally fine too. But if you feel like this is becoming like over, you're using it a little bit too much, I want you to ask yourself like, what do I actually need in the moment? that will support me in feeling how I want to feel. 
Okay, so if you're feeling like, oh my God, I just want a little bit of happiness and joy in my life right now, like what else makes you happy and joyful in that moment? Can you go outside for a quick walk? Can you like just go like look out the window while your kids are on Zoom for a second? Okay, what else can bring you happiness and joy besides turning to the food? And if you do choose to eat the Snickers, how can you make sure that you're present and honoring what your body needs? You can totally eat a Snickers with joy and pleasure and not guilt. It's totally possible. And then you move on, okay? Um, any kind of food used wisely can make a difference and can be okay for your metabolism, even if it's ice cream. So an affirmation for you here is when you're dealing with a strong emotion is to say, I am strong enough to be with this emotion. I am safe to feel what I need to and what I need matters. I choose to honor my body and take care of my needs. So again, tell yourself you are strong enough to be with this emotion. You are strong enough to do this. You are safe to feel what you need to. What you need matters. And you can choose to honor your body and take care of your needs. You can do this, teachers and mom and homeschool moms and anyone else. This applies if you're even just you're struggling with your relationship with food. You could have the best coach, the best therapist, journaling exercises, all these tips and tricks, but if your brain doesn't feel safe and taken care of, you're going to be thinking about food and overeating. So we need to get you out of the survival mode. You need to get to a place where you're working with your brain and getting out of that stress response so that you can get out of that food and stress connection, okay? So looking at like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, um, if you want to get to like that high self-esteem and you want to become the best, sorry, screaming children, and you want to become the best version of you, you need this right now. <laughs> you need your needs to be met. And in order to handle those difficult situations with kids and parents and teachers and COVID and zoom classes, you, you need to be, you need that community. You need to be the best you, you can be. And when you're stuck in food hell and obsessing, how are you supposed to show up your, for, with, for your kids and your teeth, for your friends and your family? How are you supposed to show up when you feel like yourself is stuck in the survival mechanism and feeling crazy around food? Okay, so how can you be the beacon of light? How can you show up as your best version of yourself? And I know this stuff is confusing and hard, um, and it's hard to quiet those survival mechanisms and teach yourself to self-regulate. It is hard, but I hope you can see that some of the steps you have to get through this. So right now I do have some spots open, like teacher friends, like if you're really struggling with the emotional eating side of stress, or maybe you just heard some of these stress strategies and you just kind of want to like talk it out, just shoot me a message or comment below call and I'll, um, or like message me please. And I'll just shoot you a message and we'll just chit chat back and forth a little bit about what you're dealing with. And I can see if there's any way I can help you. And, um, again, stay tuned for the rest of this week. It's going to be so awesome. I'm really trying to provide you, you guys with some, some good content to help with the stress. Again, my heart just goes out for teachers and I really just want this to be an impactful week for you. So please feel free to share this training with other teachers or other friends that emotionally eat too. This totally applies. Um, and again, I'll help you walk through that step-by-step -step process to get your body out of that survival mode. So again, we're here to support you. Um, I hope that this was helpful and then stay tuned for tomorrow with my friend and coach Andrew, who is a specific stress coach and he's tailoring his entire presentation just to help you teachers. So thanks so much for, um, being on here live with me and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.